Okay, we're we gonna go live. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, yeah. three. Okay. You get the honor of hitting the button. <gasps> Yay, well done. Nice. Good afternoon and welcome to an earlier than usual Grey's Westminster Friday live stream. Yay. Hello, yes. <laughs> so I'm delayed, you see. I'm, I'm on Zoom as well, so I'm 20 seconds behind you. Exactly. Uh, we are joined by the wonderful Matt Owen here, as you can see, sharing the screen. Um, hello, Matt. Hello, how are you? Thank you for going live earlier to accommodate the crazy time zone differences. Oh, it's uh, it's a pleasure. We don't mind doing it a little bit early. It just means that some of our regulars either had to get up super early or um, just have to watch it on catch up. But that's OK. Yeah, I want to say thank you to our um, American viewers who got up early as well to watch this live stream. So thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Um, now, we've got some questions in the chat. We had some questions on our community post. We're going to just speak to Matt about photography and Nikon and all the things you've been up to recently. Uh, amongst other things. But if you do have any questions for, for any of us, please send pop them in the chat. We do have the coffee fund. We'll have to send a co coffee is a big deal in Australia. We'll have to send some coffee over to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well absolutely. I'm a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a bit of a weirdo. I drink tea, so I hope that's okay. <laughs> Excellent. Tea fund is, yes. always, is also open. <laughs> That's right. We'll yeah, there you go. The tea fund, I like it. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, yes, you can absolutely do that through Super Chat if you would like to. Uh, and please do give us a thumbs up because although it doesn't seem obvious, the thumbs up really does help the, the stream when we're going live. It just kind of puts it in front of people's faces. So that's always an appreciated thing. Absolutely. I think it's, you know, when people, especially who will join us in about, well, quarter past two, you know, they might think, oh, I'm late. But if they're going to log into YouTube now, they will see our live stream. So exactly. do definitely press that like button for us. Absolutely. Um, so, Matt, do you want to, I mean, most people know who you are anyway, uh, a man who needs no introduction. But, uh, but would you like to introduce yourself to our few viewers that might not know who you are? Sure. Um, well, I am from Melbourne, Australia, so down the southernmost tip of mainland Australia. Um, I've been a photographer for over 30 years. Uh, I mostly, most of my career has been made up of selling my own fine art photography as original prints, books, calendars, diaries, and so on. Um, I've also been a filmmaker in tandem the whole time. My original passion was to be a filmmaker, but Back in the late 80s, early 90s, when I kicked all of this off, it was extraordinarily expensive to be a filmmaker and you could just have a, K, a Pentax K1000 and a roll of film and you could be a photographer. So yeah. uh, photography and filmmaking are obviously very close and that's something we now see in the creator slash YouTube era. And um, and now now I'm, being, I'm able to flex all of those muscles. But yes, so I've done that over the 30 years. Plus I've been a commercial photographer for... Uh, you know the majority of that three decades as well so yeah and, and I've done I've done prop, not quite everything but I've done so many things as a commercial photographer uh, over that time so it's been it's been an amazing ride and and uh, the last two years have been like what's going on <laughs> Whoa. anyway so, so there's the short version Excellent. Well, I'm going to ask you some more questions to do with that a little bit later as well um, sure. on, on your shoots and, you know, that's true. Shoots. But tell us, how did you get into photography originally? What was the reason? Is it, was it a nice girl that you want to photograph or, you know, something else? Um, uh, it, so what happened in about 1981 or 82, there was a film called Blade Runner, which obviously is a oh, yeah. huge, famous film now. And it was films like that and Alien and a few other films around at the time. And I don't know, I just became some, something triggered in me where I could see the power of the frame. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. My dad, had a, my dad had a camera and I started to play with that camera. And this is when I'm like 9, 10. And by the time I was 15, I, I could see, I could see that you could have a frame and you could do this and you could see a car and a person. And if you moved it a bit, you could just see a building and the car and the person's gone. And so you had this astonishing ability to edit the world on the fly in real time and tell stories. And, and that, as well as watching amazing films, and it was like, oh, I want to do that. So I, it, it, it sort of rolled, it, it built momentum. And of course, you know, when you're in high school, 
it's like, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do with your life? And your parents keep asking, what are you going to do with your life? And I'm like, well, <laughs> I, I just became really stimulated by filmmaking and, 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 the, and that frame. And that frame is much the same, whether it's moving pictures or still pictures. So that's where the seed started. Yes. Wow. Great. So like from early on, basically. Early, early yeah, so I had my first 35 mil camera, 14 or 15. So, mm -hmm. and that was a Pentax K1000, which I got as an elective from school. So the school mm -hmm. lent me a camera. That's so, a great yeah, camera. Yeah. It's still amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, and what was so great about that camera that I think a lot of people need to maybe, maybe they need to make it part of their photographic journey is get yourself a manual camera. It doesn't mm -hmm. shoot 20 frames a second. You've got to advance it yourself. It doesn't have autofocus. You, you know, the autofocus was this little circle that was split in half and you mm -hmm. had to you had to line things up. It was quite difficult, right? Autofocus yeah. was a thing that we yeah. had to do ourselves. And True. of course, exposure was a thing that you had to really, really worry about as well. So, uh, it, you know, it, it was a beautiful time of photography and it, it really should be revisited by everybody, I reckon. I think so. We have quite a strong kind of film following on the channel as well. Mm -hmm. We've got, whenever we do uh, a stream, if we cover a topic of film, obviously there's, you've always got people who say, look, I'm never going to go back to the pain and effort of shooting film, but they've done it at some point in their lives. It's, it's rare that we have someone who's never shot film at all. We do get a few sort of who say, well, I started with digital. Um, what film camera should I buy now? Sort of thing. Obviously we can know. Mm. Really recommend Nikon. <laughs> but key, you got K1000 from Pentax. You got OM1 from Olympus. Uh, Canon does, I think, AE1. And Nikon version would be what? Nikon FM, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. I would think so. Most iconic. Which I got one of those in about 92, and then it was stolen a year later. But yeah, oh. great. it's very similar to the K1000. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I'm like the rest of those film people. I mean, film still makes up, me shooting film was from the mid-80s through till 2004, at which point I I got a D70, a Nikon D70, which was the first camera that could actually somewhat, uh, you could somewhat say it was near on as good as film. Prior to that, digital was either just too expensive for someone like me mm -hmm. and the less expensive cameras didn't didn't cut it. So, you know, it's the 20 years of film. and Yeah, I'm very happy not to do film anymore. I know that <laughs> might be sacrilege, but uh, no, I, no. because I used to roll my own film. Because mm. I start when I started my my photographic life, I had no money. So I used to roll my own film. I used to process my own film. I used to process my own prints. So, um, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm this done. Is the I'm, way. Well, I spent, yes, this, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I spent, I, I, I hand printed a hundred thousand prints over a 10 year period. So I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Marty, I'm sure you still have your muscle memory, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I could, I still could do it. Totally. Um, yeah. I had yeah. uh, dodging and burning. I mean, I, oh, I used yeah. to, so I used to sell a lot of original prints. And I used to I used to dodge and burn, and then I I ended up making these little stencils because mm. I was doing a hundred prints a month of the wow. same thing. Um, and I even had a little Mac computer sitting in the corner of my darkroom, which had was running Excel, and it had all the the settings like what height should the enlarger be, what aperture would the enlarger be, oh wow, and all that stuff. So I I automated all of it. It was yeah. That's and I used to buy Ag for paper a thousand sheets, a thousand eight by ten sheets at a time. Anyway, the good old days when yes. a print was was an amazing thing. But um, but so prolific as well. In fact, someone said, where did they go? James said, love the calendars, Matt. So, I mean, obviously you're still selling and printing. I was on your website a couple of days ago and having a look at all your gorgeous prints there. You keep that yes. up. You, you update it, what, every couple of weeks or as you go? Oh, so look, um, you know, COVID's changed our rhythms don't you mm -hmm. think our, yeah. our rhythms have changed in in the normal course of of life as we knew it <laughs> uh, a pc pre-covid i suppose i would um you, you know my my photography was very or my uploading was very much based on the success and the success is very much based on how often you get out and how often mm -hmm. you shoot um if i was being disciplined at the moment i, I would be uploading you know once a week whether it's one image or three images. And, and that is actually the fifth iteration of my website. So the previous, because I've been on the web since 1999 and, you know, I had to update as the world changed. 
and this website now is quite new. The previous website had like 1500 images on it. So, um, and it, it actually takes quite a long time to upload images and do all the metadata and all the stuff behind the scenes. Absolutely. So you can actually go, if memory serves me, have, have you heard of a web, website called the Wayback Machine? I think it's called the Wayback Machine. No, I what the Wayback Machine, you'll love this because you're <laughs> going to start um, Wayback Machining all sorts of websites. Yeah. You can even do it to your website. You go there and you type in Greys of Westminster and then you can go look at what it looked like oh, 15 years ago. That's so and cool. they cache. That's really cool. <laughs> they are caching the web. It's the yeah. craziest thing. Oh, that's and insane. they're doing it like, you know, every month. So anyway, um, yes. I mean, like like Instagram, like I have a love-hate relationship with Instagram. How are you guys getting on with Instagram? Um, I kind of use it as my, yeah, to be honest, my website, I I update it so sporadically and I'm not even doing prints I'm just trying to remember to put my work on there yeah we do sometimes we'll do two shoots in a week sometimes it will be whatever four four to five shoots in a month so then trying to remember to put those on the website when we're also trying to create videos off them Um, yeah and all the various things so Instagram becomes my sort of like this is what we shot the other day yeah (laughs) And, uh, and it tends to work I've got I could keep instagram going for another 10 years yeah. with all my archives I think. yeah becky is my role model because <laughs> i'm really bad with instagram um my website is primarily for my portrait and beauty work so the yep. instagram i've decided finally to start to put just our general pictures so you know a part of the portrait etc so but i'm really bad on schedule and i, I know there are like things like late and buffet exist but i'm just too lazy to sit down and put this in but hopefully i'll get better one day one day one yeah day i'll educate you on how to do that yeah I mean, I've, I've made I, Instagram. I had this uh, philosophy around it was just all highly curated, which was how it started, and then that becomes a bit of a rod for your own back. And I've been I've been kind of toying with, you know, do you just put up here's my breakfast, and you you know you make it you loosen it yeah. up, not here's I will never do here's my breakfast, but you know <laughs> here's my new flash or or whatever. Yeah. And um and I suppose. Also, they they made a major change to Instagram recently and talked about video being the, the way forward. And yes, you know, stories I and reels. Yep. I don't know how you felt, but I felt I felt a little bit cheated by Mr. Zuckerberg at that point. It's kind of like, <laughs> mate, I've been putting hard yards in for a decade, and what are yeah. you doing now? You're changing everything. Yeah. So, anyway, my, my philosophy uh, now on Instagram is that you know the feed needs to look kind of consistent because that's your almost yes. like your business card. Uh-huh. Um, people look at the feed to decide whether or not to follow you. Yeah. Your stories yeah. is where you put everything, your breakfast, your cup of tea, your behind yeah, the scenes that's right. and stuff. I and agree. then, and then the reels, which is the, the short videos now, very difficult yep. as a photographer to work out where reels kind of have their place. But what I'm seeing more and more is people going, you know, this is my camera and this is what I shot. And then they just put a sequence of, of stills Mm -hmm. and that seems to be working. And I'm getting a lot of that. I also have a separate, I have a split personality because I also have a book related Instagram account. And it's, it's amazing how the concentration there has gone from people posting, you know, like reviews of books and stuff like that to short reels. Nobody, nobody posts pictures anymore. It's all real. So it's quite a challenge. It's it is yeah. really challenging. Yeah. What about TikTok, Mark? You know, are you on <laughs> yeah, TikTok? Well, you know, I'm a. I, I was known in the day as an amazing dancer, so I think I should probably even so my knees are not what they used to be. Yeah, I, maybe I should get back to doing some. I don't. I don't know. I see these people doing these things, and I'm like, yeah. I, I don't even know what they. Is it some sort of sign language? Like, what are they doing? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't know about TikTok. I, I need to. Can you teach me? On well, TikTok. no, that's the thing. I, I wanted your advice on that. So, you know, but oh, if you want okay. to do it, we can do it together, you know, in parallel. Yeah, Mike, yeah let's do it together. Yeah, the Conan Mac, tic, the Con Mac TikTok us. show. TikTok. Yeah, Becky's son probably can teach us more, you know. Okay, good. Than, good. Yeah, both of us yeah. combined. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. That's okay, good. All right. A few people well, were saying, you know, the they're not a fan of Instagram because of the of the crop factor as well. It's like uh, I had quite a few people say to me in recent times, you know, what's the point in having a photo sharing app that then crops your portrait shot so you can't fit the whole thing in? I have an app for that. It's called No Crop, but um, but it is very uh, annoying. See, Absolutely. I was opening them in Photoshop and doing that by hand, but look at you go. Yeah. You've taught me something. No crop. Let me just There's let me just write that, that down. Give me, give me a second. <laughs> I'm opening a um, note here. Yeah, no crop. Yep. 
yeah no, no crop. crop that's what it's called yeah exactly and uh so that's that's one way to do it that's a freebie i'm sure that there's paid ways to do it as well um yeah. there's quite a few people saying you know like i what their first film cameras were or you know roy who's a fellow aussie said i'd shoot film again but i'm too lazy which is fair enough <laughs> um and a couple of people saying you know they learned with a minolta uh patrick said minolta 7000 uh mm -hmm. Brock said Minolta SR1. It's almost as old as me. <laughs> um, but it's it's very interesting that I think lock, lockdown and COVID kind of brought this resurgence of film that we weren't expecting, but mm -hmm. suddenly got. And now we've got film prices That's skyrocketing true. and cost of developing and stuff like that. Um, yeah, right. It's it's definitely film film photography has become I think, like a luxury mm. item. But you mentioned that you switched when D70, uh, Nikon D70 came out. And were you looking to switch into digital? How, how was your process of deciding how to switch? Did you buy new lenses? Did you upgrade? And that will lead us to obviously switching to Z at some point. But let's start with you switching from film to digital. So firstly, I'm an epic nerd, like, uh, you know, studied computer science, etc. So I was experimenting with trying to go digital with video cameras that were digital before stills cameras were Ooh. digital. So I was getting a, a Sony, no, I'm only joking, a Sony um, <laughs> Hi8 camera. And then I was actually doing screen grabs of a mini DV camera and so on. So I was, I was chafing at the bit to go digital and you, you, you might remember the time when, you know, there was a Nik Nikon body that had the Kodak the Kodak oh, yes. um, di digital back and it was, you know, this really yeah. tall. I think and, it was based on the five, wasn't it? I, I yeah. don't know. Mm -hmm. It was like $30,000 here oh, or yeah. something mad. And and that was just, and, you know, $30,000 20 years ago is like, I don't know, $50,000 now. So it's a lot of money. True. Um, so I, I just had to wait for the price to become reasonable. And mm. when the D70 came out with the kit lens it came with, which was something weird, like a 35 to 70 or something. DX 18 to lens. 70. Yep. Yeah. Really? Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. I love your work. You are an encyclopedia. Go you. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it was about $3,000 here in Australia. So that was kind of reasonable. Um, so I had experimented. So I bought a prior to that in like 1999, I had a Kodak 1.7 megapixel camera. Wow. And that was $2,000. And then I got another Kodak 2.3 megapixel camera that was 2.1 megapixels. Mm. Then I got one of those Sony cyber shots. Remember those where there was a screen and then there was this articulating lens oh, that was really yes. long. Yeah. yeah. And that was like $3,000 and 3.1 megapixels. And then, and, and then finally the D70 arrived and, you know, I was able to use my F glass. I was like, Oh my God, you know, cause I had the F5 glorious, glorious camera. Yeah. And, um, and all this F glass. So it was a beautiful transition and it was easy. And it was like, okay, I've got all these lenses and now they just go over here and they worked. There was no, there was no barrier to entry other than getting mm -hmm. the body, you know, basically. So, so that was the first foray into digital, uh, um, you know, and using it for my professional work. Cause prior to that, I was just playing basically mm -hmm, all those other mm -hmm. cameras were just playing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, a couple of James asked if pocket point and shoot cameras, are dead mm. looking of like smaller digital cameras the compacts, and yeah. compacts we actually had a discussion about this on our podcast this yeah. week about the smaller cameras also i think it was nice t said what would i do, do you use any smaller compact cameras now at all like x100v or like a q or you know one of those so in in the uh mid 2000s i bought probably about five and this this may well be sacrilegious, I'm sorry, but I, okay. I looked at the Nikons and I looked at the Canons and actually Canon were making better pocket cameras at that time from my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. And again, it was about use case. I wanted a pocket camera that was completely manually adjustable, aperture mm -hmm. and shutter, as well as uh, raw files. And uh, the, the numbers are escaping. Oh, the, the S70, the S80, the S90, I think were the mm -hmm. numbers. So I bought those and one of actually I, I, I did I did provide a bit of show and tell today. <laughs> uh, one of my most famous images, which is on the cover of cover of my book here. This one nice. here was taken in 2006 with a uh, with a pocket camera. Wow. Um, eight megapixels. Uh, I, I was at, and you know, this was when I was 
you know, in my thirties. So I, I was still going out to bars thinking, you know, you're, you're un, unstoppable. And, um, but I, but the reason I wanted these cameras was so I always had a camera. So if I saw something amazing, I could shoot it. Right. So that, that was the thinking. And, and in this case it worked. So I had this, this in my back pocket, it was raining. I put it on a bin. I put it on self timer cause I didn't have a tripod. Mm. I dialed up the numbers. I hit the button and that shot is probably my most selling shot ever. So, wow. um, and, and this is where you'll get yeah, at the end of the day when I, when I, and I don't want to get contentious here, but when I hear talk, people talking about, oh, 20 frames a second versus 30 frames a second versus blah, 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 blah. And it's like, just, yeah. you can make an amazing photograph with any camera if you yep. want to try, yes. you know, anyway. I won't go down that rabbit hole, but um, <laughs> yes, I've used pocket cameras to answer your question. That was a short answer, wasn't it? No, it was good. It was a good answer. And it's so interesting that it actually my, probably my kind of most commented on responded to shot is a, is a picture that I took very unskillfully, I would almost say, but I was standing on the Millennium Bridge pointing towards St. Paul's. I don't know if you've ever seen those street shots of London. It was on my FM3A. I think I just gotten my fm3a and i was hand holding doing a long exposure with with the cheapest lens i could possibly get hold it was a 28 mil 3.5 which i still have um and i use uh and the handheld long exposure so that people were blurred and that and that is the shot that everybody goes wow that's your best shot that is the best shot you've ever ever taken and i could have taken that with a with an F, any film camera, really, yeah. it wasn't the with FM. a shoebox. I could have taken it with a shoebox. The I could have taken it with a potato. Mm. The um the the camera had nothing to do with it at all. Well, well, this is what I was just about to say. Yeah, cameras don't take photographs. People yeah. take photographs. Exactly. You know, come on. Yeah. I mean, have you ever seen a camera? Get itself up, walk itself out, <laughs> point itself in the right direction. Say, "Oh, there's the frame, there's the yeah. light, there's That's the true. moment, there's the focal length." So, um, yeah, yes, we we you know what we should have an exhibition of the best crappiest camera pictures ever, if that makes <laughs> yes. sense. I would yes. like to do that. I think that yeah. is your great. camera now worth under a thousand dollars. Then that's the pictures we want. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. but yeah, that's or, the thing. Or, you know, you go to the gallery nowadays, and they, you know, they put the name of the artist and maybe artist statements, but they don't put the equipment that this photograph has been taken with, isn't of it? Of course. So, yeah. And yeah. I think for the our viewers, the, what we're trying to say is really kind of it doesn't matter which brand you use or which camera you use and how much it is. It's more it's your tool. Yeah. It's extension yeah. of you of your vision, and then just you know, just do whatever you like with it. It's not about specifications, frame rates, you know, focusing points. It's about you yeah. and your photography. Exactly. I'm, I mean, we love specs and we love technology and we love yeah. new shiny things. Absolutely. And But it's a bit of both, isn't it? We've got yeah, to have a bit of column At the end, a, a end of the day, B. yeah, photography is what, what makes it, isn't it? So Yes. We wouldn't be here if we didn't like taking yeah. pictures. So now let's talk about yeah. Z9 in 20 frames per second. <laughs> no, but we are <laughs> going to ask you about it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, before I move on and lose these, I have to say thank you for yes. the contributions to the coffee and tea and biscuit fund we've got today. Um, so thank you to David May and Double Click and Terry Allen and Adrian Cochran and Vince and Keith, who said maybe some biscuits to go with the coffee uh, from Brock who's in not yet sunny California. Thank you, everybody. Thank for you, For your everyone. contributions. Um, now I can scroll down past my those comments. Otherwise, and Richard just got one in there. Yeah, Richard, <laughs> boom. Good boom. timing. Uh, nice virtual, five quid there, mate. That's right. <laughs> a virtual beer for Matt from Richard and George the Snoring Bulldog. Richard and, and George the Snoring Bulldog are, are regulars who... Um... That's right. I'm going I'm to get to the UK because it's a beautiful place uh, as right. soon as I can. And we'll have a real beer. We'll all get together and we'll have a real beer. Have yeah. some nice ales exactly yeah that would be wonderful um so in terms of obviously i watched your your recent video on the 28 to 75 you've you've had some of the newer toys to play with you have had the z9 so i suppose we should talk about the camera that everybody yeah, well I, I bought one so i i have one I, yeah yes. uh, ha have you have you managed to kind of put it through its paces do you feel yeah so uh the thing about the new technology and this camera is that I, I feel like there's so much to take in mm. and I'm a very intuitive photographer. So I, I the camera becomes an extension of me. I just kind of know it backwards. It melts away. 
And I get to the point we were talking about before where you just see the shot and it's an extension and off you go and it's done. And as I said in a video that I put out over, over the Christmas break holiday season, uh, you know, it, it'll take me kind of three months before I've kind of fu fully tested it and fully wrapped my head around it because, you know, there's high frame rates, but then there's also focus modes and then there's also 8K and mm. then, you know, there's, there's all these things. And I was thinking about it today. Part of truly understanding a camera is when you shoot something, it doesn't quite turn out how you thought, mm. then you adjust something and then you shoot it again and you keep it iterating until you refine what you do and how you do it with that tool. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and I think this is such an important camera. I think technologically it's groundbreaking and the fact that it's got no shutter, I think changes things a lot. So I just want to give it the respect of just sliding it into my world and just feeling, you know, am I, am I banging up against anything? Is, is there glass ceilings or not? Mm. And um, so that's sort of the philosophy. It's freaking ace. It's awesome. <laughs> I love the 8K. I love the in-body stabilization. It's, it's more than the previous cameras. It's ridiculously fast. The focus is super sticky. Um, and, you know, the things that, and, and I'm, I, I've got to tell you, I'm really enjoying a full-size body. Again, like I, I, I've, I own the D2X, the D3, the D3S, the D4. I've still got my D4 and my DS and my F5. Um, I, and I'm really enjoying that larger body. You know, to hear people complaining about, oh, you know, it's uh, 300 grams heavier than the R3. And I'm like, dude, just go work out. Come on. Seriously. Is that all you can complain about? Yeah. Honestly, you should be proud of being able to hold a Z9, not complaining. I just don't yeah. get it. Anyway. So, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's. I, I'm pretty confident it's everything that Nikon has said it's going to be. And it's a camera that is just an, an extraordinary all rounder and it's filmmaking capabilities. Like, cause I really want to lean into that side of stuff. I don't know if you've seen my 8k Melbourne video, which I did around Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that just, that, that to me, that's my happy place. You know, I'm, I am so happy making something like that. So, and I, and I love, I mean, think of the, like the price point, like I was, Two or three years ago, I was looking at red cameras because I wanted to buy it. Like, this is the mm. thing. I wanted to buy an 8K red camera. Wow. And it's like, oh, $55,000. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. And then now, now I can do it yeah. with the Z and yeah. I have all these Z lenses. Like, it's, it's just genius and it's brilliant. So that's my short answer. How about that's you? A, that's a good, <laughs> yeah. We don't mind the, the yeah. longer than two word answers. Otherwise, yeah. this would be a very short stream. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Do you think it's a yes? <laughs> I think it's a yes. Okay. I think, I think Matt likes it. Yeah. Um, I mean, quite a few people are saying, uh, like Steve Land said, Matt seems to be the person putting the Z9 through its paces the most in real world scenarios and pushing it hard. I think one of the things that a lot of, um, maybe not, I wouldn't say content creators in general, but a lot of people get a camera and then they want to post a review on it like the next day, but without using it in real world situations, as you said, yep. you can't really formulate an opinion about it. No, you can be like, Oh yes, it's faster than my old camera, but that's, it's very limited view uh, when it really is a camera that should be used in so many different situations. And, yeah, I totally agree. And, and this camera it pretty much will will do anything anywhere. Um, yeah. And for example, I'm using the batteries from my D4 mm -hmm. in that camera. I mean, just think about that. It's in there and it's working. I didn't even know if it would charge up. It charged up, it goes in, it works. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really good. And the fact that I reckon, you know, let's think what they've done with firmware on the Z6 and the Z7. Yeah. Three years out, they gave us a big improvement. Who, who knows how long it's going to go on for with the Z9, but I just, and we already know about 8K60 raw, yeah. which is just what? Yeah. Um, internal, you know, and they're giving us ProRes internal. Like that's crazy. So I, I just feel like we, we, we might only know, I'm going to just go out on a limb. We might only know half the Z9 story when it comes to some mm. parts. Like, like I've done a bit of data crunching and I reckon they can push the frame rates harder if they want. I don't know. I could be wrong around data wise. There might be another issue why they mm -hmm. can't, but data wise, I think it's possible. And I don't care. Like I personally, I, I did some high frame rate tests and I've got a video coming up shortly, but it's not about that. And in the end, uh, and I was talking to you Con, about this in half an hour, I shot 10,000 images and I was like, 
I don't even know if I want to make this video because I don't want to look at 10,000 images. It's just like, because, <laughs> you know, I'm going, how long is this card going to buffer for? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. still going. Uh, yeah. It's it's not, it's not it's not buffering. I can just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And then I I'm know. like, oh, well. And so I was kind of unincentivized. But So I want to let everybody know if you shoot in the high efficiencies or if you shoot in DX and you've got the right card, there's effectively no, no limits. Don't, mm. don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. And you don't want to <laughs> anyway because you yeah. in half an hour you can have. And I tell you, I was taking my finger off the button and I still got 10,000 shots in half an hour. I, I reckon that was only 10 minutes of shooting. Ooh, it's God. it's ridiculous. Anyway, oh, there you go. Oh, my goodness. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, were you... Were you shooting? What was your camera before? What was your main camera before the Z9? Was it the 7 or the 7.2? Yeah. So I've got Z6, Z6.2 and a Z7. And mm. I was holding off on the Z7.2 just because I wanted to see what the Z9 would be. Mm -hmm. And then maybe what a Z8 might Ooh. be. <laughs> it's Con's <You> camera. <laughs> now let's talk about Z8, man. <laughs> yes. We talk about let's it talk every about week. It. Um, We've got to talk about it with hushed voices. Hush, absolutely. Hush. The camera that doesn't exist that we oh, all want good. to exist. Yeah, I'll I'll right. switch off the live stream. So, you know, don't worry. They're yeah, not yeah, going to hear it. So, yeah. No, no, do it. Um, but but it's, it's quite interesting how... Um, <laughs> Stop it. It's so bad. I've got it under my desk. <laughs> uh, Michael, thank you very much for your got contribution to the coffee fund. I have some more. I have some more thanks to give. Uh, but also Michael said, how did Nikon go from the Z7 to, in that case, straight to the Z9? It was like a kind of like a rocket ship taking off. You've got the Z7. I mean, I never used the Z7 II, mm -hmm. really. I've used the Z7. I have the Z6, which I like very much. The Z9 seems like such a a quantum leap a generational leap isn't it yeah yeah basically um yeah what how, i mean what, the z we, i've used both of those I've, so i've used the z7 too it's not it's not that different from a z7 i mean no. it's it's more about the vertical grip and the card i love my z7 like it's still going strong it takes unbelievable files that just kind of blow your mind yes um like the first time i put the 50 mil 1.8 on i made a video about it three years ago and i'm just like mm -hmm. This this kind of looks like my Hasselblad. What's going on here? I, I don't mm -hmm. get it. And nice. I'm actually I've, I've got my Hasselblad out recently and made a video. I'm going to make another one where I put the Hasselblad with the 50 mil equivalent and the Z7 and it mm -hmm. and the 51.2. And I'm going to go head to head see oh, what wow. happens. I think we will find that they are different but similar. And for a quarter of the price, you're getting pretty a, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Z7s are so cheap now, and if you don't need redundancy you don't need a vertical grip that's you know active and uh you don't need two card slots z7 is an amazing deal and, yeah. and it, it gives you a lot yeah absolutely yeah. i second that um yes thank you to brian for your contribution to the thank coffee you. fund coffee and beer coffee fund's going hard <laughs> it Go is hard going hard today yeah uh, love it and, and uh and to richard and Gary said, Thank sorry you. for the weird amount. No, don't, it's fine, Gary. Thank you so much. Um, so we are, let me just see if there's any more questions about the Z9. Yeah. Fred's, Fred's asking about uh, Fred Fred from the USA. Hi, Fred. Hi. How are you going um, about best cards for performance? I don't necessarily own the best cards, um, but I was playing with, um, I was playing with this. This one may well be. Which one's a Delkin? Fast. Oh, no, Prograde. Pro Prograde. But um, I, I have found that like the, the Pergy ones that I have quite a few of are also pretty similar. Oh, wow. It, it, like it really depends on what you want to shoot. What, what, oh, there he goes. I like it. Oh, He's sorry. It. It's that name. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what, what I found is unless you're shooting, unless you're expecting, unless you want to shoot raw for more than, uh two or three seconds and let's think about that more than say 40 or 60 frames almost all cards I, I think there must be a kind of some sort of buffer and all cards will pretty much let you do that i was actually mm -hmm. testing this today and um if you want to kind of shoot indefinitely then you've got to go to some of the efficiency you know the other the other two um raws the high efficiency star and so on yeah so so because even if you spend a lot of money on a card you you still hit the buffer um in straight raw you know the the lossless compressed mm -hmm. or whatever it's mm -hmm. called so 
um, uh, Prograde and and this Prograde and what's the other one? Oh, Angel Bird. You know, they're they're mm. high end, well regarded cards. But just I, really think about your use case. Like, I, I, are you really going to be shooting? You know, ten second bursts. At, you know, getting two hundred. I don't know. Anyway, think yeah. about your use case. That yeah. would be my advice. Otherwise, well, my, my, yeah. almost any card will do everything else. That's true. Let's say for your photography, what percentage of that nine features are you actually using for your type of photography? Yeah, so I, I always said on my channel that it was mostly for the 8K and for the 4K 120. So as a filmmaking tool. And, but I, as I said, I've really enjoyed the ergonomics of the mm. larger of the larger body. I mean, you know, everyone, you know, I'd get, you get people in your comments going, oh, aren't mirrors, mirrorless lenses isn't everything supposed to be small the lenses should be small the body should be small and it's like you know what i don't I'm, i've got big hands you know what do you do yeah. um i don't i'm actually really happy uh, you know a z7 is quite small in my hand so um so i'm loving the ergonomics i'm loving the feel i'm loving the ibis but they're the features like mm. i'm not a high frame rates shooter so, look every now and again i get some commercial work which might you know, might need that. But the reality is commercial work here in this country has been on hold for almost two years. Like I've had a mm. few sporadic moments, but strange, strange days indeed. Absolutely. It's different, uh, different time now mm -hmm. we, as, as Matt frozen. I think we've lost Matt. <laughs> Matt, can you hear us? <laughs> it's frozen for a second might be an internet connection, but we're okay. Yeah, we are fine. Um, I actually want to ask Matt um, about like how is the Nikon service in Australia? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a really good point, actually. Did uh, please hold, folks, while, <laughs> while right. we have this intermission. Right. Uh, oh, Ooh, power failure! Power failure! The fun and joys of living in Oz. Well, if you want to main screen us for a minute, yeah, definitely. So, if we'll... only I would know how, but I think let's have a. Ooh, not that. No, unmute. Okay, no, go we're back getting to there. The, All right. Um, yeah, there you go. Ah, right. Here we are. Here I'm we really are. enjoying this conversation. Yeah, it's, it's great actually. Whilst Matt's uh, power is not failing, <laughs> I was going to comment on that just in answer to Fred's question. When I used the Z9 for a couple of weeks, and uh, I had I have lots of Sony XQD cards in my Z6, so I had the standard G series cards. They're like 400 meg per second right speed. Mm -hmm. I was rarely, if ever, shooting at 20 frames per second. But in the instances that I did, that was fine. I would not want to to have to look at 60 or 80 or 100 shots of the same thing. Yeah, the Kalian process is ridiculous after that. But of course, if you let's say shooting sports in action then yeah you need that to select the best frame yeah exactly um yes he's he's getting there he's slowly, on the way surely so uh we'll give him a little break while he's he's trying to get the thing it's always fun having somewhere where you have power cuts we don't really get that in central london thank goodness but um that's but australia to you he, even he, in melbourne you have was, a power cut matt was saying that it had they it been quite wet and windy um and very humid so i'm sure that probably doesn't help either mm -hmm. i don't know keith are you uk based or us based i know in the us if we're going to talk about z9s i suppose we'll talk about z9s um in the us i know that allocations have not been bad at all they've actually had quite a generous supply but uh, in the uk and europe the the uk distribution center or sorry the european distribution center which feeds to everywhere else basically didn't ship anything for about a month so anything like anything nikon at all um so the uk certainly haven't had hardly any z9s and the, the z9s that have come through have been you know you could count it on one hand or less so um that's possibly why you're waiting mps or not mps it doesn't seem to make any difference we're just all we're all just waiting um in australia i know that supply hasn't been too bad mm -hmm. in comparison i know that matt got his but also there were quite a few other um other people in australia who managed to get hold of those so i think it depends on where you are really ultimately uh, and hopefully that answers those couple of questions. There was another thing I wanted to ask Matt about his lens mm -hmm. experience because he's been using lens. That's true. More recent lenses. Well, he's so here. He's, he's getting, uh... getting. Oh, but I've just got to. Can you hear, can you hear me? We can yes. hear you great. Oh, Welcome my back. God, it just went dark. Everything went dark. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's um, funny. Is, so that, we... is that common? 
No, um, mm. we had big thunderstorms here, but I, I think I think something I don't know. I don't know whether I've tripped the power or what's happened. No, it's not common. It's not common. Um, I just want to put so sorry, everybody in. YouTube land. I'm now on my laptop uh, in the kitchen, so there's going to be a big echo. It's and totally fine. We can actually hear you completely. You can. I'm just going to get um, in the darkness. It's yeah. the heart of darkness. It's like a floating head. <laughs> Apocalypse now. <laughs> uh, a couple of people were saying that Matt had nipped out to get more tea. Oh, beautiful. No, yeah, go for it. I'm just getting this to put the laptop on, okay? Okay, good. Oh, so it's going to be nice and melted after that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I'd, I've got to. This, I'm on my 2013 laptop, so uh, it's um, it, it has power. Luckily, let's see how long this goes for because the battery's Amazing. pretty old. Anyway. All right, Goodness let's give it a go. Um, so moving on from Z9 to sort of lenses, you've been doing a lot of lens stuff recently yes. with the so, as I mentioned, the 28 to 75. Just out of curiosity, in like a reasonably shortish answer, the 28 to 75, do you think we're going to see? more like that from from Nikon what's your feeling yeah yeah well I mean a lot I, I, I'm sure you've got this a million questions around the 70 to 200 uh f4 mm. so um I get that all the time yeah uh, obviously we've got the 14 to 30 f4 when you say those sort of lenses, I'm not sure if that's code, but um, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's cheaper it's, and like maybe 2.8, maybe possibly not originally designed by maybe Nikon. a license from someone else, maybe license. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean, let, let's just explore theoretically that it is a license from someone else. Um, the Z lenses are so amazing and, you know, I, I, I get quite frustrated when in comments people who've never used a Z lens say that they're expensive and not very good and it's like, what, mm. have, you, have, you, have you used, have you used mm. the 1.8 lenses? Yeah. Don't you realise that the 1.8s are better than the F1.4s? That's true. And we're not going to get Z 1.4s, I don't think. We're going to get just all 1.2s and mm. this is the progression and this is what the mount gives us. So um, the reason I say that is because, well, the only reason Nikon, if it's a third-party lens and it's, uh, well, uh, they've, they've licensed the design, I would think they're only doing that just to get things out faster, you know, just, just to move quicker. And my preference would, to see, would be to see them make that lens. But, but you know, time is of the essence and... Mm. Uh, I think for the time being, we might see a few, but in the long term, perhaps not, but maybe mm. short term. And when I, when I say short term in the camera industry, I mean three years. Mm. You know, some people okay. think short term is like three months. But it's like That's when people say Nick, Nick on a late, late to mirrorless. And I'm like, hold, hold it a second. The two big incumbents, Canon and uh, Nikon, arrived at the same time. Sony was early to the party. Yeah. The other guys weren't late. Sony was Ooh. early. Anyway, yeah. you, you can spin it however you want, right? But anyway. Yeah. That's true. That's um, yeah. So you had 2875 for uh, small, uh, well, for quite some time. What's your kind of brief opinion about it? Yeah, it's good. Um, let me just think because I use so many different lenses. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything, everything's good so far with that lens. I mean, I've only, I've only used it twice, and I'm I, I, that's the lens I was going to take out tonight if I'm mm -hmm. suitably pumped to go out and shoot with it again. Sure, um, three a.m. in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was younger, that's when I would shoot because the city there is zero people, and it's mm. you know people don't come out at three a.m. It's actually safer than going out at ten mm. p.m. when everybody's drunk and on their way home. Yeah, even um, in, Mel in Melbourne on Friday night. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, look, Friday night's the Sunday night's a wiser choice. Mm. Um, look, I haven't done pixel peeping at the files. No, no, yet, but just your that. general feel about it. Yeah, we, we're not asking yeah, it's, for you. It, it's great. It's great. Yeah. And I and and anyone that's complaining that it's, you know, might be a Gen 1 Tamron, it's like, I just don't think that. Like, it, it, let's say they licensed it. There's so many elements of that lens that could be Nikonized the, the, the coatings, the, house. mm -hmm. the, the housing, the the mechanisms that run the focus, you know, there's so many, obviously it's first party, not third party. So I don't know. I, I don't know. People just, they, they just look for anything to poke at. And I'm like, it's, it just may be the bits of glass that are the same. Everything else is literally everything else is different. That's what our thoughts are as well. Yeah. 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 But I'm um, good. The answer to your question is, I think it's good. 
Mm. Yeah. And but it's the, early I mean, days, early days. It, it's difficult to kind of give a, a lens, a, a verdict when you've only shot with it a, a handful of times. Yeah. Also, when there's so many mid-range lenses available now in, in the Z lineup, like, I mean, we were just talking about it earlier, 24 to 50, 24 to 70 F4, 2.8, uh, 24 120, 24 to 200, and now 28 to 75, you almost kind of go, what? What, yeah, why? Is, yeah, which way is although a, a friend of mine has said kind of repeatedly, you know, the 24 to 70 2.8 is an you know, it's, a, it's an expensive lens, and mm. um, to be able to get a 2.8 that's almost the same, you know, a lot of people want that 24 instead of that 28, but mm-hmm. besides that, you know, it's kind of half the price, so yeah, yeah, uh, and you know. <laughs> corner sharpness, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, are you, a, are you a photographer or are you a person that stares at the corner of your screen all the time? You know, we can go back to that conversation. At yeah, the end of the day, they will both take amazing photographs because you take the photographs. Because you take the no. photographs, exactly. You take the photograph. I have to say a big thank you to Patrick for you. your contribution to the Biscuit Fund in this case. And uh, Tim Neal, who said, not for coffee, this is for Get Matt Back on the Grid 2022 fundraiser. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Tim. Thank yeah. you. Can we get some Anzac biscuits? Oh, you know, yeah, sure we can. Um, Love a good Anzac. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We do get them over here as well, actually. Anzac biscuits. That's usually, awesome. in, usually in the world foods aisle in the supermarket, but still, we mm. can still yeah, get yeah. them. Beautiful. Um, um, and then the 100 to 400. I mean, Con and I have shot with that a little bit recently. Um, and I've really enjoyed it so far. Have you had been able to kind of put that through its paces a little bit? No, I, I requested, no. I, I asked for one and I was told they, they couldn't get me one at the moment. So yeah, I think I yeah. was shocked and nearly fell off my chair when we got one. <laughs> It's yeah. like, wow, I feel so privileged. Are I, you sure? I, think, <laughs> I actually think the reason for that is because Rishi has been away and I think the one that we have is his copy. Um, and there you go. So that's the only reason we have it. That's have true. Back. Um, but so tell, to tell me, what, what do you think of, the, of it? So we tested it. It's tricky because there isn't a, necessarily a direct comparison in the How account. does it compare it's- to the 7200 28? Yeah, so we compared it exactly. So we took the 70 to 200 2 8 out. We took the 100 to 400. Immediately felt like the 70 to 200 was too short because the 100 to 400 just has all that range. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, <laughs> James, can I borrow your 100 to 400? Sorry, it's not ours. <laughs> so I wish. Um, one thing I noticed is that with or without the 1.4 converter, it, it doesn't slow down and focus. It doesn't get softer. It's almost like yeah. you wouldn't notice the converters there, which is which is incredibly useful because it fills yeah. a big gap that we have in the Z lineup. That was the most exciting thing yeah. for me, actually. If you look at the cost of that, let's say versus something like 400, 2.8, mm-hmm. it's a reasonably cheap option. And yeah. like I pretty much at the moment, I have this lens and I pretty much have 1.4 to the converter sitting on it at all times. And at this point, yes, if you photographing something which is quite distant, this is really good setup. And then, yeah, I mean, 7200 is great, but I would generally use it mostly kind of for portraiture or maybe indoor sports, like something like volleyball or something like this, you know. But 100 to 400, uh, in terms of use, has a lot more use, I would say, if you're doing sports action wildlife. Yeah, cool. I don't know whether I'll add one to my to my <laughs> my my lens. I'm not really much of a long lens person. Mm. Like I, I own the 200 to 400 uh, VR2. Oh yeah, and it's a beautiful lens. I bought it. I don't know eight years ago, and for a specific client actually. And otherwise, I don't use it very much. Mm. Fair enough. But that's okay, you know, because I'm not a wildlife shooter and so on. So it's, it's, it's all about use case. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. a real thing, use case. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not something that people just make up. I mean, Con wasn't really shooting anything long distance until I sort of started pushing I was him. Forced in. I, yeah. I forced him to go and do some bird photography. Um, yeah. And slowly but surely, get in there. <laughs> and that's the thing. I mean, Z9 for that kind of use, it's ridiculously good because you put it on yeah. animal recognition, you hold air phone button pressed at AFC all the time, and you just press the button, take the shot. It's there's no skill involved. I was surprised <laughs> by that. And obviously, for me, not being not not doing this type of photography, it was just like oh yeah, everyone can be a wildlife photographer. Obviously, you know, I'm not seasoned at all. And, you know, I didn't have, any, didn't use any cameras, but that nine, you know, but it just felt so easy to shoot this with this particular setup. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm. I want to take that lens out, and uh, you know, I, the biggest struggle I've had with bird photography is finding the birds, not not the photography part. Just yeah. finding the like. It's like oh, I, don't, I don't know where you know birds hang out in trees. All right, uh, no good <laughs> birds over there. I don't know. So I think that's a massive part of it's. Mm. It's like we were saying before. A lot of the photography is about you know getting to the right spot in the right yeah. light at the right time with the right mood. It's yeah. the same with wildlife, you know. Um, yeah. It so, really yes, is. unfortunately, I don't know anything about the 100 to 400. I'm sorry no about that. No problem. But um, out, just out of curiosity, what would be your, not necessarily on the roadmap, but what would be your next kind of dream release from Nikon lens-wise? Yeah, well, so one that is on the roadmap, but we don't officially actually know that it's the 85 1.2. Mm. But, uh, but we're it's all certainly guessing that it will be, right? Yeah, yeah well, there's un- yeah, like I said, I don't believe there are any 1.4s uh, planned mm. for, for the next. I mean, m- maybe they will because we have five lenses covering the 24 to 70 range. Maybe they will do one, one eights, one, mm-hmm. one fours and one twos. But later, I doubt it. I doubt it though. Mm. Um, so that that lens is huge, and any other sort of primes beyond that, I, I, like I, I'd be really interested in like you know I've seen Matt Granger and he's got his two hundred f two, mm-hmm. which is, I've never used a lens like that, and I would I love short depth of field. Almost everything I shoot, I'm I'm almost mm-hmm. wide open all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, any, anything down that end of the spectrum, maybe t- I, I own the, uh, 24 mil tilt shift and the 85 tilt shift, oh, nice. but I reckon they'll be, a, they'll be a long, long way off. Yeah. Um, I don't think they will be a priority plus they're fully manual. So they work just fine on the Z, even so they look rather Frankenstein mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. And then you add an F to Z adapter and they look completely mm-hmm. Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, what else would I be excited about? Um, Jerome was suggesting the 105 1.2. Do we think there's going to be a 105 1.2? I mean, that's a, the 105 1.4 F mount is one of my favorite lenses. Yeah. Ever, ever, ever. It would be. See, I almost bought. I, I almost bought that, and then I think kind of the Z mount was coming because that's a pretty new lens, and mm. I was yeah. like, oh, I'll, I'll hold off. Um, I, I mean, surely, surely that sort of lens is coming because it exists in F. So yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, anything around there, 105, 135. Sorry, Con. 135, you think they're going to release 135 of two or 18? At the end of the day, I think anything that's sold well, and you would know far more about that than I do, uh, will will come in in good time, you know. And (laughs) I'm sorry, so it's another 24 to something Zoom then. (laughs) I really hope it's not another 24 to something. I, I don't. I, I would say they don't need any more. I, yes. I, I'll go out on a limb and say we're yeah. done. Good. That's enough. I, I think done. we should have intervention with Nick and just say that that's enough. Yeah. Just, just you know, yeah. let's have some seventy two hundreds now. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's an opportunity to talk about the the, the DX uh, lenses, and you know, I, I'm not really. A, I've never been a DX person except when I was forced to with the D70 and the D2X because, of course, I came from 35 mil film. I was used to everything that that provided. I feel so I was, I, I, I was jumping out of my skin when the D3 arrived. That was like the holy grail. And that was yeah. the first digital camera that I ever used that actually felt and looked like film again. So, um, but there's lots of people that love APS-C, D- DX, and obviously may- maybe we need the 24 to 72.8 equivalent in DX, whatever. Mm. whatever. What, what's that? You go 35 it's to... 17 to 55, no. basically. Yeah, 2.8, something like yeah. this. Yeah. Would that ever the, exist, do you think? It did. It did exist in the F mount. So, um, but the interesting thing was that I found more often than not, people would buy the full frame lens and then just put it on their DX camera. And just a future proof, basically. Yeah, yeah. And then just buy a dedicated wide angle for the DX line, which I can see is on the roadmap. So I, I assume that that's kind of what Nikon are thinking. Um, yeah. Well, cause I own the Z50 and the ZFC and yeah. I, I love putting just whatever lens on the front works, you know, that lens that I was shooting before the power went out. You know, that was the Viltrox. Am I allowed to say Viltrox? Anyway, that was the Viltrox 23 mil. Mm. And it was actually, you know, I was playing with my 20 mil and then I got my 35 mil. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I've got this 23 mil. That's perfect. So, um, and that is a DX lens. Like, it's not a full frame lens. So, um, I mean, I think it's good for Nikon that there's the third party options. So, yet again, so people can't just keep complaining about there being no third party options. (laughs) 
I was actually going to ask you about that because I wasn't sure if you used third party lenses and um, a lot of people ask us, oh, when is Sigma or Tamron going to make Nikon lenses? We know because we, we deal with Sigma that they're waiting for a license and that they will only ever get an official license from Nikon rather than uh, sort yeah. of reverse engineering Continue, yeah. thing, which yeah. is completely fair enough. Apparently they're also in the same talks with Canon. So, um, but they've done Leica, they've done Fuji, you know, it's like, what, what come on, Nick. And they've done Sony as well, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so are you of a similar mindset to us? Do you think it's quite healthy to have these other brands producing lenses? Are you happy to use other lenses other than Nikon for your, for your kit generally? Yeah. So I, I, I now wear two hats. I wear the Matto and Photography hat, our professional and art, art um, shooter, and I wear the content creator hat. So mm-hmm. the content creator hat's very happy to use third-party lenses. But mm-hmm. prior to my content creation days, um, uh, one day I was in a shop and the shop person said, look, uh, third-party lens, they don't, they don't know what's coming down the line, the manufacturers, whereas first-party Obviously, they can build a lens and know what's coming in the future. Mm. So, if you you know you might spend an extra you know let's say let's say it's a thousand pound lens, and if you buy a third party, it's six hundred and fifty pounds. Pay the three hundred and fifty pounds more because it'll be future proofed. Blah blah blah. So, I, I just took that advice on board. It never let me down. Mm. But I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with third-party lenses. And, you know, I'm a working photographer, so you you, you can pay for a lens in one shoot. So, mm-hmm. it, you know, whereas some people have to save up for a year. So it's easy for me to say that. Yes. So I think everything is awesome is basically what a third party is good. But personally, that's my personal approach. Yeah, because well, you have different, basically, price entries for everyone. As you say, as a professional photographer, we would pay for gear and we don't mind spend extra. And then for someone yeah. who's just starting, they can, you know, spend less, get the lenses to start with, and then maybe later on they'll upgrade to a proper Nikon stuff. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, I've, I've been sent all the Viltrox lenses pretty much from Viltrox, and they're, they're half the price, but, you know, there are, there are differences. And yeah. the, of course, yeah. the, the 1.8Z primes, the, the, they are just spectacular, all of them. Uh, mm. just off the chart, you know, chromatic aberration, flaring, all that sort of stuff. It's just like, wow, at, at the price point from my perspective. Because I own all the F primes, the 1.4. They cost a fortune yes. and people don't realise. And the, the Z lenses, the 1.8, you know, the only difference is the 1.8 versus the 1.4, which is what, a quarter of a stop or a third of whatever it is. Mm. It's not even a full stop. Mm. And these lenses in general, there might be a few cases where it's not true, but in general, uh, far better optically. So, mm. you know, I, sh- I should actually do it because I've got the 24 and the 24 and the 50 and the 50 and the 85 and the 85. I've got them in F and in Z and there's no comparison. Like it's, mm. it's, it is a generational jump. And they're cheaper than the 1.4 versions, right? Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I have to say thank you to Joseph's workshop. It thank said you. for Matt's Suvlaki Fund. Uh, oh, thanks, Joe. <laughs> and Jerome Can I just say a big shout out to Joe because Joe comes and shoots with me about about half the time I go out and shooting, and he's he's my my B cameraman or my A cameraman or whatever. So, thank you, Joe. Awesome. Um, and then Seth joined us. I uh, don't know if he's still hi, here, Seth. but hi, Seth. Thank you so much hey. for joining us. Um, Mr. New York. <laughs> he, did, he did say, actually, Nikon and Canon want you to buy their lenses first before they let the, the mount licenses go. So once the roadmap's yeah. complete, it's probably going to happen after that. Come on, Nikon, and release all the roadmap lenses so that we can... So, so won't that be 2032? Because <laughs> yeah. there's still a lot of lenses to come. Well, there's, there's plenty a lot of, of time, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, plenty a long time. way I mean, yeah. Absolutely. The universe is going on for a long time yet. I, I believe it's not contracting again for another six or seven billion years or whatever it is. We're okay. fine. The sun- it could be okay. That's true. Yeah, we'll I just be want okay. to thank Seth because without his knowledge how to stop Zoom to live stream to YouTube, yeah. this live stream won't happen yes. because That's true. Matt, Seth us. exactly. Seth told Matt, Matt told me <laughs> we are live on the internet. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah because of Mr. Time- Seth Miranda. Thank you very much, Mr. Exactly. Seth Miranda. Exactly. Our Some love goes out to you. Actually, we need a Mr. Seth Miranda save his back fund. We need to do a bit of a drive for that. Maybe not in this video, but let's do another video because that man's 
got a broken back because he's been a hard-working photographer for like 25 years. Anyway, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later, but we need, to, totally. we need to help that man out. No, totally. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, we've actually done, in fact, I think, what, a year and a half ago, I tried to do a live Zoom with uh, Rob McNeese, who's our head of Nikon Pro Services over here. And uh, it went horribly wrong. It couldn't have gone more wrong because we didn't have this know-how and setup. This is practically flawless in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys is, rock. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And then Becky's going away, actually. So, mm. and then we were trying to figure out how to actually do live streams while Becky's away. So now we know. This and will, hopefully it works. This will happen quite a lot over well, the next few weeks. If, be prepared. Con, if you need guest wing people, mm. I'm happy to be a guest wing person if you want. Excellent. Let me know. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Honestly, <laughs> you know, I'm enjoying our conversation. <laughs> It's, yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. It's, it's I, I, it would be lovely to be a, you know, honorary or temporary gray, you know, <laughs> a, a G-O-W. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We could even get hats and T-shirts. Who knows? Oh, definitely. In definitely. Fact, the, the beanie hats are in progress right now. We've got, I don't know if beanies are probably a bit too warm for, for Melbourne. I'm not sure. How, what's the temperature like on average? Well, in, in summer, we can get like right now we've had, um, like a week and a half of 30 to 36 centigrade. <laughs> and then winter, it's the average maximum is 9 centigrade to 15. So, okay. so yeah, for, winter is good. For, for your winter and our summer, we can send you over a Gray's beanie. Uh, awesome. Keep you nice Loving and warm. It. Hopefully they should be printed by then. They're, they're on their way. Um, awesome. But uh, but yeah, no, I definitely think you could set that up while I'm away. So, definitely, definitely. Um, someone pointed out, Andy, thank you very much for pointing out. Please do give us a like. If you haven't given us a thumbs up yet, please do. It's very helpful to the stream. Uh, YouTube likes it when you do that. <laughs> And Keith mentioned it as well. Yeah. Um, so that's great. Joseph said, I wear two hats, one I won from Grays and one I bought from Matt. So there you go, talking of hats. Um, so you've got hats out there in the world too. Yeah, I should be wearing my, my Canaconi hat, which was all about world peace, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, well, how do you, you need to add Sony into the mix and a bit of Fuji and Leica as well. Well, I, I have done an updated one, which is Panaconi X, which adds Panasonic, Canon, Nikon, Sony, and X for X Mount Fuji. Fuji oh X. I'll send you one. I'll, pr- oh, I'll, I'll, I'll make some and send you one. <laughs> Maybe not appropriate for the store, but you know, <laughs> world peace and all that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, on did we ever talk about the Z8? I don't think. I think we got sidetracked because I talk too much. Do, do you like? Do you personally want Z8, or what would you want to see in Z8? Let's say compared to Z9, because a, a lot of people what we hear now is say. Well, why would you want Z8? Because the Z9 exists. And why would you call, like, a lot of people say that Z8 will be a mini Z9, which I don't think personally happens. I, I personally think that Z8 will be a more of a D850 thing. What's your opinions on Z8? Obviously, you know, hypothetical yeah. so, Z8. So let's go out on a limb and say the Z7 III may well be very similar to a Z7 II but just with faster, you know, the updated innards, similar mm-hmm. sort of pixel count, mm-hmm. but faster, you know, faster focus, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So th- yeah. then that says mm-hmm. to me a Z8 is, is, is probably starts to get into your A7R4 territory. It's a mm-hmm. higher megapixel camera. Now, I personally don't want... 60, 80 megapixels, I don't think, in a 35 mil sensor. I think there's a diminishing return that happens at some point. Now, of mm. course, uh, who knows about new technologies and whatever else might come. So it's really hard to say what the Z8 is. Is it going to be, is the Z8 actually going to be the Z7 III and, the, and, and that's it? Like it just, it just is that? Or is it a high megapixel? Or is it what I, what I want, which is medium format, but um, mm. I've I've co- I've co- I've coined that the ZM for medium mm-hmm. format, not for Matt. Yeah, no, it's it's mm-hmm. the Z Matt. That's right. <laughs> I was gonna and, say, um, it's the Matt version. Z Matt sounds better, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so, you know, would, will, will they do it? It 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 could be the sixty megapixel, eighty megapixel. Mm. So, like every company has rumors around going to the high megapixels you know there's a current rumor around sony going to 100 this year you know with the a7 mm. uh five so mm-hmm. so 
and then the only hole that's left is the is the because that becomes because that becomes the true upgrade to the D850. An upgrade to a D850 is not a Z7 because it's the same pixel count. It's not an upgrade. So if you want to actually upgrade a D850, you, well, you've got to do something new. You know, the upgrade the D850 was an upgrade from a D810, which was 36 megapixels to 45. So you've got to. I think you've got to do something there. So then the only hole is the D500, and uh, I don't think that's the Z8. I, I'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. So that, that's my that's my theory. Z73 stays where it is. Z Z63 becomes 33 megapixels or something. Uh, Z73 stays roughly the 45. same. Maybe goes to 50 megapixels. Mm -hmm. Z8 becomes 60, 80 megapixels. Mm. Z9 yeah. is the speed demon. Yeah, I don't. Know. I don't know. Well, we have like a M11 at 60 megapixels and the Sony yeah. camera as well. So the 60 megapixel sensor is available. So that's, that's it. I, I guess, the kind of highly likely jump. But you also mentioned medium format. Do you think Nick and Bill ever do medium format? I mean, I personally want it as well myself. Uh, yes. I don't think it will happen. But what, what, what do you think? Like from the chatter you hear, is it actually a possibility or not? Oh, look, there's, there's zero chatter. What happened two years ago is I made a video that, that ended up going quite viral because what I did one day I was staring at because I own a few Sony cameras I was staring at my Sony a7r 3 going oh geez that sensor fits in a that 35 mil sensor fits in the mount how do they do that like when you look at pictures of it the sensor is actually behind the mount mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. okay so what if you applied the same degree of behind the mountness to the Z mount and the GFX 100 style sensor. Mm -hmm. And what I found was it was near on ide identical from a ratio perspective. Mm -hmm. So my belief is it's possible uh, just purely mathematically and that's it. Um, it would be extremely easy for Nikon to buy, you know, a GFX 50 sensor from Sony because they mm -hmm. obviously have a relationship with Sony yeah. for the last 20 years. And it's and, quite an old sensor as well, isn't it? Yeah, and 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 so they could have tested it easy peasy, easy peasy lemon squeezy, um, mm -hmm. rip out the ibis because you know they're just testing it on the t the test bench, and mm -hmm. it could it could be in a Z six body like it, that wouldn't be a problem to just test it and see if it kind of works. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know if you guys know anything about Fuji sales. I have I have no information about that, but I presume the GFX one hundred and the GFX fifty are selling reasonably well. So I look upon it as a market that Nikon could tap. So just mm -hmm. purely from a market share perspective, mm -hmm. I, I would believe a lot of Z mount owners would go, oh, wow, like here I can buy one lens that's going to be maybe slightly larger and it will go across my small, medium format, my 35 mil and my APS-C. Mm -hmm. It's like the system of all systems. Now, I'll tell you an interesting thing. Uh, some F lenses cover the GFX sensor. Mm -hmm. People have yeah, tested it. That. I've seen videos about it. And I actually, yeah. uh, at some point, I want to buy a GFX mm -hmm. and start adapting some of my F lenses. Now, mm -hmm. longer lenses can do it. Wider lenses are not so good at it. So my, be my belief is if, if that's the case, it's possible that some Z lenses would already cover that sensor. And let's say it doesn't. What if, what if you get a slight crop on the lenses you have, but it's still bigger than 35 mil? Mm. Or what if there is a little bit of vignetting, but, hey, we're, we're correcting vignetting already? So camera, yeah. it just feels like to me that there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle there. Mm -hmm. There's market share to be got. They've got the biggest mount. The sensors exist. Like there's just... Anyway, you know, this is mm -hmm. this is complete speculation, but I just feel like from a just a physics perspective. Mm -hmm. I have and, a follow-up question for you on this one. Uh, do you yes. think there's a significant jump in terms of, let's say, image quality and details from full frame to a small medium format big, um, sensor? Because it's a small medium format sensor is, I think, 33 by 55 or 44, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. 40 so is the smaller and, one. And we got 36 by 24, uh, which is full frame sensor. Is it a justifiable jump in terms of image quality? Because obviously, if you talk about traditional medium format, which I guess we started at 645, but if you look at 6 by 6 and 6 by 7, um, that's what I think where the, the jump is quite significant. Is it significant yeah, jump between the small, medium, and full frame? Yeah, so it's, it's funny you should 
asked this question because I just made a video with my Hasselblad talking talking about exactly this subject. And uh, of course, there's not, and my Hasselblad is an old, large, the large mm-hmm. size sensor, not not a X1D, okay, uh, the so same as the GFX. H6 something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The H, the H, well, mine's an H4D. That's how mm-hmm. old it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still got the large sensor. So uh, for me. For me, my photography is traditionally low light, and I, I don't actually want more megapixels. I'm interested in in a larger sensor and larger photo sites. Right. So they could give me a 50 megapixel small medium format. So I'm not necessarily personally hunting for that kind of that that medium format look because I'm not sure. I don't I don't know. I haven't used a GFX 100. I have used the Hasselblad one, the X1D. And no, there's not, there's not, you know, it, it's minor. Let's say it's minor, mm-hmm. but it's more about the techn- the the pushing of the envelope around photo sites, high ISO and dynamic range. What I would really love is more dynamic range and mm-hmm. maybe 16-bit comes along with that as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, but it's use case, right? And we all have our different use cases. Yeah. But, I mean, we're so, getting everything from, you know, people suggesting that they would prefer a- rather than a medium format or super full frame or whatever mm-hmm. the, you know, the small medium format. I think super full frame sounds actually quite good for this type of sensor. Yeah, I like that. I, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so we've got some people go, saying that. Other people are saying, you know, Nikon should really, you know, have a ZC, a Z Cine camera and a whole Cine line of yeah. lenses. Yeah. Um, and then uh, some people asking for, you know, I want a Leica style Nikon. I mean, there's the range you, finder. Use use cases exactly what it is. Dif- we have as many different types of photographer as we have people. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. we're all different, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> that is well, I mean, another camera that I'd love to see is the thirty, the DF. You know, the thirty-five mil version mm. of the ZFC. Yeah. And 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 to talk about the Cine camera, having you. Like having used the Z9 and used it in 8K and having used the 10-bit uh, H265, mm. it is a cine camera. Mm. Like uh, it, it's an astonishing camera. I think what's in it is astonishing for the price point and it's a stills camera as well and it's just ergonomically like, you know, top of class. Mm. Like it's a class, like I would have, I would imagine that the R3 and the Z9 are the two best handling cameras you can get because even even the change between the F series, you know how your D, D5, D6 has the focus unit when you're holding it vertically yeah. and now this camera, the focus unit's gone. I, I've never felt a more comfortable camera in vertical than the Z9. So, yeah, it's an amazing cynic. I mean, the thing that people want is stuff like XLR in, you know, but... Mm. You know, when you get to a slightly higher production, you actually have separate sound recording. So then it's, you know, it, and it, it's very cheap to get separate sound recorders. So uh, yeah. it's a hell of a cine. And, and look, the, you know, the ergonomics are different on a proper cine camera, but, geez, they're giving us a lot. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is another market they, they could fill, and it's probably smarter to fill that one than the medium format one mm. first. Sure. Are you listing Nick on first? We still want the medium format, just, you know, maybe 2027. Like yeah. <laughs> My worry is actually the production capacity, how many sure. lenses they can turn out. And obviously with the whole, you know, semiconductor shortage and all this stuff, you know, my worry is that they just don't have enough capacity. They're already at full capacity in terms of production sure. that what do you do? Because obviously you may want to open another factory, but that takes another probably year just to build and, you know, mm-hmm. do all the tooling, et cetera, et cetera. So, so yeah, that's where my concern is, but you definitely, I would love them to expand on that. Yeah. Yeah. Time will tell, hey? Exactly. <laughs> um, As to whether we get any of these toys. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, we may end up, you know, the Z8 may just be a shaved down Z9 with a higher resolution sensor and keep it simple, or it might be something entirely different who knows i i tend to find that whatever we expect something to be it's not that when (laughs) when nikon comes out with the goods you know i think the same thing happened when when the d800 and the d800e came out that Mm -hmm. was surprising it was actually a surprise those were surprising cameras for us because obviously Mm. up until that point we'd only had we'd had the d3x 24 megapixels shocking 24 megapixel camera five grand it was yeah yeah uh, very expensive and the d700 so suddenly to have this huge jump to 36 megapixels was like oh my what uh, what and that was at the half price of d3x that's right and then to go 
to the D850. Again, I don't think anyone was necessarily expecting that. There were a couple of people, because I think at that point, Canon did have a 60 megapixel sensor. Um, they had 5G Mark something, which was the higher resolution or something. The yeah, R, wasn't that the R? R? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, which I think had some some noise issues and, and yeah. stuff. But, um, but the fact that kind of Nikon went for a, a different benchmark, if you like, for their high resolution professional yeah. camera was surprising. I think the same thing will happen with the Z. Speaking of high know. res, yeah, sorry, just a quick, like, I know you do prints, so we, we talked like you were saying yeah. how far they can go with resolution. How far do you need it to be for the type of, because you do sell a lot of prints, how, how big do you print and what resolution do you normally need for that? Well, you know, the reason I got the Hasselblad was because there was a time where I was selling canvas prints that were over two meters wide. Mm. And, but my most successful uh, over two meter canvas was from the D3. It was an image called Splat. It was a crazy graffitied laneway and it was 12 megapixels. Mm -hmm. Now, what's great about canvas is it's a little bit forgiving because of the textured surface, you actually get away printing canvas larger than on, on a print. Um, and, and so kind of, kind of in the last, you know, like from 36 megapixels onwards, it's like that's more than enough megapixels really to cover almost anything you can think of. You know, I work for advertising agencies, stuff ends up on billboards, but we stand like, 200 meters from billboards and then mm -hmm. you don't even you don't even need it so yeah um any 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 camera we have almost today 24 mm -hmm. to 36 would be my entry level like i wouldn't want to go lower than that um mm -hmm. yeah i mean i don't crop um so i i just don't why don't i crop i can't remember now it's just i suppose because i started on film and film was so bad like relative yeah. that you didn't really want to crop mm -hmm. you know i was shooting 400 400 Ilford and sometimes pushing it to 800. And that was a grainy film, I could tell you. Oh, yeah. The Very HPs grainy. are quite grainy, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Um, I've, towards the end of my film days, I was using the Ag Agfa, I think it was, 25 ASA. You know, we yeah. said ASA back then. Yeah. And that was a beautiful film. Um, yeah, anyway. So, so I don't know. 24 megapixels. I look, again, it comes down to is the, like I said, the most successful, one of the most, if not the most successful picture I have is eight megapixels. And that has been blown up to two meters. And that's it on point has. and shoot camera, yeah? Yeah, it, 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 it was at its limit. It was, it was pretty much falling apart at that point. But, you know, it's about the emotion. It's about the mood and far out. You, yeah, anyway, let's not go back there. No, you're <laughs> right. It's far more about the communication that the, that the picture evokes than how many pixels totally. it was shot at and how big you blow up. It's very I have, like you guys, I've stood at retail and sold artwork for my, my, my entire, I think my children have woken up and they're at the hallway here. Hello, girls. Are you there? I know the power's out. Hey, guys, can you just fill for me for a second while I try and fix? Of course. Fix? I'll be We're back in a second. We're much longer, so don't worry. Um, I will, oh. while Matt's doing that, I will just say thank you to Ian and a massive thank you to Randall for your contributions. Thank you, Ian and Randall. Uh, Randall said Nikon can make the ultimate stuff because they can do it. So there. Um, I think uh, yeah. it's, been, it's been so interesting also. Yeah talking to Matt and having his viewpoint because he is it keeps it very real and is very much yeah. you know it's about the it's about the photography which yeah. we we always talk about we have to talk about specs but, we but speaking of gear I absolutely agree with Matt in terms of medium format and that you would I love could, a medium I would format. be all over it personally yeah. you can read all the comments afterwards there's so many yeah <laughs> well that's the thing I, th I think the people like that GFX system from Fuji and yeah. uh, you know if you look at their financial results I think their GFX system do, does really well obviously in Instax beats everything but uh, you know there's a reason why people craving for this medium format so I think if Nikon taps into that that would be nice it would be nice anyway everything all good we'll see <laughs> <laughs> we'll see we'll see I know it's always tough I was doing live streams from home when I was also trying to homeschool my kids during lockdown so that was fun <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. We had the same thing. It's, uh, it's great. I don't know so, when I ran away. What were we talking about when I ran no, away? We were, well, we, I was recapping on just the subject of, you know, the different comments of people supporting the idea of having a medium format 
camera lens, et cetera, the lenses and how that system would work and things. I mean, it definitely, it's going to be interesting to read through the chat when the comments aren't going like this, because, uh, because there's a lot of very interesting feedback. Yeah. I'll definitely have a rewatch of that later on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. But we've kept you for way over our allotted hour. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going strong. So I'm, I'm all good. If it's you want to go a bit longer, we can. Stream, but... yeah. <laughs> 24 hour live stream. Um, so just as a kind of, I'd say maybe a, a wrapping up ish question. What is your, of all of your everything, all the cameras that you've had, all the lenses that you have, do you have a, a fav an ultimate favorite? And that's one that maybe you are more emotionally attached to than anything else. It might not be because of the results it produces, but I know what cons is. <laughs> K1000. <laughs> really? No, okay. no. F100 okay. for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've literally, I don't know how many, I actually don't know how many cameras I've owned. It's probably 30 or something. And it's been Canon, Sony, Pentax, obviously Nikon, yeah. Hasselblad. Um, but I would say my favourite lens is the Z 50mm 1.2. It, it, mm. it, it makes me cry every time I use it because it's so good. Like it's seriously like I'm not I'm not I'm not overhyping it. It's just like like I love depth of field. I just yeah. it's what I live for because what are we, what are we? We're photographers. What do we create? We create something that's flat. What does depth of field gives us? It gives us dimension mm. when when we're dealing in a flat. So why do I shoot everything wide open? It, it's just intuitive. I didn't go oh you know how do we create depth short mm. depth of field blah blah blah. Mm. It's just, it looks freaking amazing. So do it, baby. Okay. And it does. So, and, you know, I always wanted a 50 mil 1.2. And of course the Nikon ones were manual focus and I just, I never got around to getting one. And, and, and that, that lens is just blows my mind. Um, my Hasselblad is very beautiful. Um, and yeah, I, and, and now I suppose like right now the Z7, because I've been using it for three years, because I got one straight away when they came out. Um, I just I love everything it's done for me. Like I, I'm going to send you guys my calendar, and that and, and what you'll like about that calendar is it's all shot on Z, mm -hmm. and so it, it's all beautiful. It's just the the rendition blows my mind for the fact that you know in this country for not a lot of money, it's just you just get this astonishing image making machine. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the, the, the Z, I, it's premature to say the Z9, but the Z9 for me fits a different part of my heart, which is the filmmaking part, you know, mm. because it's 45 megapixels. I've had 45 megapixels since the D850. I've still got two cool. D850s. So it's not, it's not floating my boat. It's not that it's not floating my boat, but it's not, you know, there's nothing new with that 45 megapixels. But yeah. with the 8K and the ProRes and the 10-bit and the 4K 120, that's all new and that that's blowing my mind. So from filmmaking, Z9, otherwise Z7, Hasselblad, I don't know. The D810, the D810 is probably one of the most beautiful cameras I used. I love the files. There's something about, you know, you know I, I don't know how much you guys notice the difference when the sensor technology changes, but there's these very yes. subtle changes in how the files behave. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the D3 was a bit of a sweet spot. The D810 was a bit of a sweet spot. Um, the Z7, I think, is beautiful. So, yeah, I don't know. There's been a lot of, I've had it's a lot tough. of loves, you know, <laughs> and they've all treated me so well. It's a tough question. Did you ever, yeah. uh, speaking of sort of background obliterators, if you like, did you ever get to use the Nox? Did you ever get your hands on on the 58 mil 0 0.95? No, I should, I should actually, I should, I, I looked into buying one, would you believe? And then you it was like, you should look into at least b borrowing one or, you know, yeah. seeing if, well, I, I, I've never thought I, because the Nocta was like it came out at the start, and then I've kind of forgotten about. I should just ask Nikon if they'll lend me one. I don't, I don't, yeah. know, I don't know if it, I don't know if it comes with a security guard, but I, I, it, I would love it. it I, I think you would. Abs I mean, obviously, it's a manual focus lens again, yeah. but it's much doesn't bother me to manual focus on a Z anyway. I mean, you've got focus peaking yeah. in the viewfinder if you're really desperate for it, and. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a background obliterator. But I'm I'm the same as you on the fifty one point two. I I had that for a yeah. few weeks last year, and I did not want to give it back. Saving up? Yeah, don't yeah. don't give <laughs> it's it back. Just, it's just just say you dropped it. 
<laughs> and, Sorry. and then you put it in the bin. It's, it's right gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's really really cool. I had another question, but I've now forgotten what it was. Did you have, <laughs> do you have any other questions? No, I'm enjoying just the conversation. Yeah, you know, the 51 so I'm thinking, I always find it a bit heavy, but I never used yeah. it that much. And I'm and I'm thinking in terms of. Let's say for general walk, I would probably still get 51.8 just because it's obviously so portable. Of but uh, the 51.2, yeah, when you put it on the camera, and if you shoot commercially, it's you won't invest in this lens because it's so good. Yeah, and I- yeah, yeah. Well, for, like uh, I've, I've, like my, my, my personal work, my street photography is actually the biggest part of my business and always has been. So I am very used to walking, like, I, and because I've kind of got such a wide range of lenses. Often I'll go out and shoot and I'll go, oh, well, which lens do I want to take? I'm, I'm going to see if I can get good shots with the whatever, right? And, mm-hmm. and I've never had an issue with whatever size or weight. Like mm-hmm. the Hasselblad, I took it out at three kilos with the lens and everything that I took. And, it, and, it, and it's like, do I want to make beautiful images or do I want to worry about another, you know, the water or you carry is like mm. another liter, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, um, so I'm not worried about the weight. It's, it's, I'm, I'm there for the magic and the weight is, is, you know, I'll stop when I can't walk anymore. That's when I'll stop. Yeah. If that makes yeah. sense. I mean, I don't know if you've seen any of those videos where I'm on my scooter and I've got like, I've got a Z9 and that on one side, that's 10 grand there. And then I've got another seven grand here. And yeah. it would be so easy to fall off and. and <laughs> well, let's not go but, there. Have a bed. <laughs> but my point is, is they're tools and. For me, it's about it's 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 hunting for the very best shot, and it, you know they're tools. And yeah, anyway, you know, I'm, I'm more interested in the shot than than worrying about the gear or worrying about anything really. As it should it's be the shot. It's the shot. It's the shot. <laughs> Um, yeah. One question that I meant to ask you, which was on our community post from Steve Boys, he said, "What has Matt decided to do with his F mount gear after his recent video?" Um, yeah, it sounds like you're still hanging on to some of it. Yeah. Uh, after that video, I, it was a, there was a great you know commentary in the in the in the uh, in the comments, which is always fabulous. And uh, in in the end, uh, I think I think I probably will hold on to them. Um, yeah, I think I think or, yeah. or, or 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 quite a lot of it anyway. Like I've got I always own two cameras minimum that are the same. So when you shoot and if something goes wrong or you shoot. Often when I shoot, you know, you want two lenses, two different lenses, but you want exactly the same outcome. So I've got two D850s and I might, maybe I'll sell, I mean, I don't really, I don't use them at all. So I should probably sell one and a couple of the lenses that I don't use very much. I think it's. I'll probably keep most of it. Yeah. Just because I want to get the GFX and try it out, you know, see, see which ones work. (laughs) See what happens. It's a slippery slope. But then I know that we can have the ZM, the Z mat, you know, I'm going to tell Richie that there needs to be the Z mat. That's got to be the next one. Um, Yeah. Thank you to uh, Jean St. Louis you, Jean. for your contribution to the Coffee Fund. Very, very much appreciated. I think I've acknowledged everyone. I just wanted to make sure that I got all the thanks in. Um, and I think a lot of people have kind of agreed with that sentiment that, you know, it's it's the photograph, it's the final yeah. product, the image that counts. Yeah. I mean, we love the gear. <laughs> at the end of the day, we're all geeks. So we love to talk That's all true. the specs and things like this, but you know, a part of this, it's good to go out and just enjoy photography unless you want to do it indoors as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking I'm a studio guy. So I'm like, mm, can't forget myself. No, you know? no, you can't. Exactly. Um, right. It's half past two. Half past two. Which in your case must be about half one in the morning, is it? Yep. Good. Gracious. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Well, you just gonna... wrap it when you want to wrap it. I'm, I'm, yeah. th- that tea that I had is clearly... Powerful stuff. <laughs> it's obviously so kept you, you going. You, so you, far. you guys pull the plug whenever you're ready. I'm fine at the moment. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of um a lot of reg- it's so funny. Some of our regulars are just joining now and have just said, Oh, hi, I'm just here. <laughs> well, there you go. You see, we made yeah, it. Memo. <laughs> we, we made it. <laughs> we did. But I really we made like it to the, the right time. Exactly. I really like the idea of um of maybe being able to do a a, another guest yeah. spot while I'm away because they're in for Becky. Yeah, there will be a couple yeah. of um, weeks. I'm away for the month of February, basically. And although I will try and do, um, I will try and remote in, and we'll try and do Zoom live stream maybe next week and see how we go from there. Uh, it would be great to have your once you've 
maybe done that shoot that you didn't manage to do last week if you managed to get to do that then you can let us know how that goes sure. i think me and you matt we're going to talk medium format for an hour or so you know <laughs> i love it i love it yeah exactly we just do an entire medium format based uh Based live stream. I have to a, fa- have a fantasy chat. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I have more people to um, thank from the coffee fund, but I need to <laughs> need to get it off you my phone. Need to find them. <laughs> I need to find. They're them. all over the place, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Let me just because we have some people that contribute using PayPal. Ah, uh, yes. Well. Other other places. Are yeah. there any other questions that we want to look at? Come That's on. a really good question. Let me have a look. I I, I, I lost. I lost the live stream when I changed to my laptop. So of course. I, I'm just uh, Andy's, in Zoom. Andy's asking if we can post your website, which we will definitely do. Um, and I will do that afterwards, Andy. Um, we I'll have a link a to Matt's channel as well, don't we? On uh, the we, description. We do. Yep. We have a link. Exactly. And also thank you to Randall again <laughs> uh, for your contribution to the Coffee Fund, who hopes no more lockdowns in Australia. Please, that's what his request was. There's no Can more I tell you just quick, that. just just quickly to talk about that? Um, here in Melbourne, we've done our own self-imposed lockdown because mm-hmm. COVID's gone crazy here. So oh we're officially out of lockdown, but everybody's staying home anyway. Well, not right. everybody, but a lot of people. It's a bit funny, isn't it? It's interesting mm. taking that. Yeah, I mean, the the British public have very much kind of been given the reins now, so. We, which I don't know if we're responsible enough to do that, but <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> but uh, it's very lax yeah. here for sure. So you can kind of do whatever you like as long as, as long as you, if you obviously do have COVID, stay at home, which is very important, and don't go yes. sort of like hugging people. Everyone allowed to have parties, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know it's it's a bit demented. We're just a party island, apparently. Okay, here we go. I've got my list of names. So these are all the people that contributed using the PayPal coffee fund. Um, and I'm doing this now because I will forget to do it next week while I'm away. I have too many things to do between now and then. So thank you to Phil Dixon, uh, Fred, I'll make Fred again, Krieger, Jan Vandenberg, uh, Jerome again, thank you. Uh, Andrew Kramer, Ian Willard, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Keith Bamber, uh, Phil Dixon again. Sorry, I missed, missed you in there twice. Donald Wright, uh, Keith Wilhite from Missouri, Brent Susie, Dallas Ewan, and H. Gola. I don't know what the H stands for, but thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Yep. For that. We're going to let you go unless you had any final questions. No, I because I'm thinking I have a lot of questions I want to ask you, but I think you that's going to be for it. another hour. So I'm going to save it for another stream with you. So because I think we can talk and talk about different things. And yeah, I want to talk about you, you know, like different lenses, what your gear, what you normally go out with, et cetera, et cetera. You know, but I think I think, you know, let's have a part to it at some point. Definitely. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. Awesome, guys. It's been absolutely amazing. I'm so happy that we finally connected. And um, yeah, it's just been great. And um, I look forward to the next one. Becky, you you have a, a great trip. Um, I'd love to have a month off. So I'm, I'm very jealous. But uh, I will be working, but I'll be just working not from here. <laughs> I hear but you. I'm, I mean, I'm going to try and relax somewhere in there. <laughs> people in our profession as uh, content creators, there's, it's, 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 we're always on. Yeah. Yeah. 24 seven. Always, yeah. always. So yeah, it's going to be interesting, but, um, but it has been amazing. So thank you very, very, very much for joining us this afternoon. Absolutely. And Such th- a pleasure. And thank you to everyone at home um or at work or wherever you are on your commute who's joined us this afternoon for uh, for our special live stream we will see you in some form or another next week have a fantastic week if you haven't liked the stream please do before you go it would be tremendously helpful for those of you who just joined because you've got about the time change you can watch it on catch up don't worry it's not going to go anywhere and uh, please do head over to matt's channel as well and give him a subscribe and a like as well absolutely thank you very much matt i mean i'm um, <laughs> So it's grateful, great. honestly. <laughs> I've I've just been enjoying and smiling all the time. So it's <laughs> not sense. yeah, it's normally you and Richie. You just you know when we talk, I just smile. That's all you know naturally. <laughs> yeah. uh, but thank you everyone who watched us. Obviously, if you haven't seen us, join us on weekend because you know if you have some spare time, definitely. It's a, I think it was a great talk, wasn't it? Was it? Good. Yeah. Yes, it was an afternoon well spent. All right. Well, I'm in charge of the end stream button, so I'm going to do that now. So yeah. have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Did you do it? I think, I think.